من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله سبحانه وتعالى وخير هدي هدي رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين we begin exalting the mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising and thanking Him, asking Him subhana for guidance and that He keep us guided and that He bless us to be a source of guidance for others, that He grant us His mercy and that He never deprive us of it, that He grant us complete forgiveness, erasing all of our sins away as well as the consequences and the effects of those sins. Asking him Jalla wa'ala that he abundantly provide for us and that he bless us to be from those of his servants that are appreciative and content with what he decrees. We ask him Jalla wa'ala that he protect us and that he even protect us from the consequences of our sinning. We bear witness to the testimony of faith, to the declaration of truth that there is no God except for the one and only Allahu Rabbul Alameen who is one without beginning, the eternal, without parents, without associates, without progeny, the absolutely one and unique, the only one that deserves to be worshipped in truth, and that his final blessing and messenger, prophet for humanity as a whole, is the best of them all, the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace, blessings, mercy, and all goodness forever and always be upon him, his blessed family, his blessed companions and everyone who seeks to be blessed like him by following his most blessed example, his sunnah, until the day of judgment, Allahumma ameen. O you who believe, guard your relationship with Allah and cherish Allah as he deserves and be sure that you do not die except as Muslims in full submission to him. Ahibbati, my beloved brothers and sisters, Ramadan passed a week ago. And subhanAllah, as quickly as it came, it finished. And with Ramadan ending, we know that many things unfortunately return back to their pre-Ramadan mood. Of them that the shayateen, the demons are freed. Allah protect us from them. And for many of folks, their lives go back to normal before Ramadan. But here's the question for us. What Allah Jalla favored us with and blessed us with to experience during the month of Ramadan of having faith and that sweetness of faith, that sweetness of feeling that closeness to Him, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and what it means of blessings to be loved by Him, Jalla wa'ala. Are we going to go back to life as normal? Or are we going to continue that Ramadan spirit 
until the next Ramadan and that we only build and increase upon it. I would hope and pray that every one of us, that not only do we say with our mouths but from our heart, but that we prove with our actions that we want to maintain that Ramadan spirit and that Ramadan blessing because we know that it is priceless. We know that what we have experienced, what Allah Azza wa Jal blessed us with, of faith and of increase in faith and of that strengthening of faith and all the blessings associated with it, that nothing of this world can ever compete with it. Therefore, nothing in this world is ever going to cause us to go back to whatever our older selves were, but rather to maintain that blessedness of Ramadan, even though Ramadan has passed. And that we are not going to be in the way that some, mashallah, have mentioned that there are Ramadan Muslims, in the way that there are only Eid Muslims. Wallahi jama'ah, we never want to be just Eid Muslims or Ramadan Muslims or Juma Muslims. But we want to make sure that we are true Muslims in every single moment of every single day of the year for the rest of our lives. And to do that, here are some reminders, some motivators to help us keep aligned and keep focused. And the first of them is with regards to our prayers. Many of us, alhamdulillah, we were coming to the masjid to offer our five daily prayers, as many of them as we could in jama'ah, to offer our sunan, our ratiba, and not only that, but to even pray the taraweeh. Well, what can we do now that Ramadan is over? Of course, we want to make sure that we maintain those five daily prayers. And that we maintain the sunnah naratibah, those sunnah salahs that are associated with the fard prayers. And here's this beautiful hadith that's in Muslim. An Uthman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa ardahu qala sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul man salli l'isha'a fi jama'atin faka'annama qama nisfu al-layl. وَمَنْ صَلَّ صُبْحًا فِي جَمَاعَةٍ فَكَأَنَّمَا صَلَّ اللَّيْلَ كُلَّهِ Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah Azza wa Jal be well pleased with that third Khalifat al-Rashida, Dhunur Rain, the one who was blessed to marry two daughters of a prophet that no other human being in history was blessed with. Being of Ali Bayt al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that he heard Allah's messenger, may Allah's peace, blessings, mercy, and all goodness be upon him, saying, whoever offers Salat al-Isha in congregation, it is as though they have stayed standing half the night in prayer. And whoever prays Salat al-Subh, al-Fajr, in congregation, in jama'ah, then it is, it is as though they have stayed standing the entire night in prayer. How does that work, brothers? You pray Salat al-Isha with the Imam in the masjid in jama'ah. Allah blesses you such that your reward is as though you have stayed up half the night standing praying. So even though taraweeh is not there, look at the reward and blessing that you can get for praying Salat al-Isha in jama'ah. And if you were to pray Fajr also, then it completes the other half of the night such that Isha and Fajr together combined Allah's blessing for you and His reward. It's as though, even though you may have spent five hours, six hours, seven hours or more sleeping from Isha until Fajr, that your reward is as though you were standing up praying to Allah Rabbul Alameen the entire night. Who can give up that blessing except that there is truly something of an illness or something that prevents them from coming to pray these prayers in the masjid. What else? Fasting. Yes, Ramadan is over. But fasting as an act of worship that is so beloved to Allah Rabbul Alameen, there are so many other opportunities. And as we are in the month of Shawwal, listen to this hadith that is Sahih, collected by Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah and others. And it is declared Sahih. عن أبي أيوب الأنصاري رضي الله تعالى عنه أرضاه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صام رمضان ثم أتبعه بست من شوال فكأنما صام الدهر أبو أيوب الأنصاري may Allah عز وجل be pleased with him and with all of the صحابة رضوان الله تعالى عليهم said that Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said 
whoever fasts Ramadan, then follows that up with six days, six days of Shawwal, then it is as though they have fasted the entire year. So you fast Ramadan 29 days, as for us it was 29 days this year. After you have completed Ramadan, meaning that if you have days of Ramadan to make up, brothers and sisters, just the same. You make up your Ramadan days first, then you fast your six days of Shawwal. You don't have to fast those six days consecutively, back to back, you can break it up. But you fast those six days, it is as though you have fasted the entire year. Jama'ah, let's always bear in mind that when we are talking about Allahu Rabbul Alameen and referring to Him, He is the most generous of all. And that at minimum, each good deed counts as 10. 29 days of Ramadan, it's as though they are 290 days. Six days of Shawwal, it's as though they are 60 days. 350 days as though it is an entire year. This is the level of generosity that Allah Rabbul Alameen continues to show for His slaves and servants. What else? Charity. We know that in Ramadan, some, mashaAllah, on a daily basis, they were giving. Some brothers, Allah bless them and sisters, that as they walk into the masjid, they put something in the sadaqah box, or as they are leaving, that they are putting it in the sadaqah box. That there's a fundraiser, that they are raising their hands, or that they are secretly, privately giving to every single cause as much as they could. Well, Ramadan is over. Well, once again, our generosity in our charitableness, it does not end with Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we're told by Jabir radiallahu anhu, in the hadith that's in Sahih al jamia He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khayru nasi anfa'uhum lin nas. He said, the best people are the ones that are most beneficial, most helpful, the ones who are best to all of humanity. So when we're thinking about this ahibba, if you want to be the best, and this is the best in Allah Azza wa Jal's record book, this is the best as regards Allah Ta'ala's standard, the best as regards the role model that the Prophet والسلام, established for us to follow, his lead, because he was the best salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, then we want to continue to be the ones that are most beneficial, the ones that are most helpful, the ones that the greatest amount of good is coming from them to the rest of humanity. And if we can focus at least on these three things, ahibbah, in addition to everything else of what we have done in Ramadan, after Ramadan, continuing it, we will be from those of his slaves and servants that will maintain that blessed Ramadan spirit and will continue to reap the rewards and the fruits and the blessings until the day that Allah Rabbul Alameen claims our souls and He claims them with love and with mercy and with forgiveness. And I pray that He bless us with this. Allahumma Ameen. Just move forward if you can, brothers. Fill in spaces and gaps. Let's accommodate the latecomers, please. Wa jazakumullahu khayran. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh. Inna hu huwa al-ghafuru rahim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Brothers and sisters, if we can anchor a very positive and strong association with regards to Ramadan and the Ramadan spirit. Let it be that we associate a Ramadan lifestyle, the Ramadan spirit, the Ramadan attitude with a beautiful, blessed, happy life. Ramadan, beautiful, blessed, happy life. 
And we want to understand that that's what everybody is ultimately looking for and they want in life is happiness. Whoever thinks that it's going to come through money, that's why they're so focused on wealth. Whoever thinks it's going to come through position and power and title and status, that's why they're focused on those things. Whoever thinks it's going to come through physical sensualness, that's why they seek it out in that. Whoever thinks it's going to be through people, they follow that route. But we know that happiness is something that can only take place when our heart and our soul is aligned with Allah's purpose for us, subhanahu. And life will show you. Because those who have the wealth are still not happy. Those who have the power and authority, they are still not happy. Those who have the sensual pleasures of whatever the world can offer them, they're still not happy. Those who may have whatever it is of people in their lives are still not happy. Rather the opposite, what they come to conclude is that even though they thought that was going to give them happiness, they still ended up feeling what? Betrayed. Feeling even further in whatever it is of sadness and in pain that they may be feeling and suffering. It is only with Allah Rabbul Alameen that we can feel that true perpetual state of happiness. But here's something that we want to pay attention to. Because we're talking about prayers, we're talking about fasting, we're talking about charity, but here's an element that doesn't require really anything of money, it doesn't mean you have to fast, nor is it anything of prayers, but yet look at how important it is with regards to us maintaining that Ramadan spirit in being able to maintain that sense of happiness and that blessedness within us. And it deals with the way that we live, our character, our manners, our behavior. And for this, I want to share just three hadiths. عن أسامة بن الشريك رضي الله عنه قال كنا جلوسا عند عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كأنما على رؤوسنا طير ما يتكلم منا متكلم إذ جاءه الناس فقالوا من أحب عباد الله تعالى من أحب عباد الله تعالى إلى الله فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم أحسنهم أخلاقا والحديث صحيح في مجمع الزوائد أسامة بن الشريك may Allah عز وجل be pleased with him said that we were sitting in the presence of Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and we were so still it was as though birds were perching on our heads and no one from us was saying a word and this is to tell you the level of love and reverence that they had for the Prophet That it was not just talking vain talk and wasting of time and who knows what. But they had the most beautiful manners in front of the Prophet And it wasn't just that they had this in front of the Prophet and then when they left his presence, they were a second face, a dual personality, a split type of a behavior. No, no, they were consistent. That's who they were. And he said, no one of us was even saying a word. Well, why not? Because what they want to do is hear what the Prophet ﷺ has to say. They want to learn from him. And they're learning from him his character and his behavior in addition to, and even more than what they're learning of what he has to say, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Until a group came. A group of people and they asked the Prophet ﷺ a question saying, Which of Allah's slaves and servants are the most beloved to him? Isn't that the million dollar question that we should all want to know? Which of us, which of Allah's servants and slaves does Allah love the best, the most? And the Prophet ﷺ answered them saying, Ahsanuhum akhlaqa. The ones who have the most beautiful manners, the ones who have the most beautiful character, the ones that conduct their life in the most beautiful way, 
that is of course most beautiful with what Allah Rabbul Alameen has given us of guidance and that guidance is completely rounded up and summed up and embodied in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his Sunnah. Here's the second hadith on Abi Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu. An al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam qala akmal mu'minin imanan ahasinuhum akhlaqa al muwatti'un aknafa. الذين يألفون ويؤلفون ولا خير في من لا يألف ولا يؤلف والحديث في السلسلة الصحيحة. This hadith that's in the سلسلة الصحيحة by Sheikh Al Albani رحمة الله عليه and upon all of our scholars. He tells us that this hadith that Abu Sa'id al Khudri may Allah عز وجل be well pleased with him and with all of the Sahaba رضوان الله عليهم. That the Prophet ﷺ said that the believers who have the most complete, the most perfect faith are the ones that have the most beautiful manners, the ones that have the most beautiful character, the ones that live their lives most beautifully emulating the Messenger ﷺ that is the most perfect, the most complete, the most beautiful embodiment of what it means to be Ibadur Rahman, the slaves and servants of the most loving, the most merciful. You want to talk about complete faith? The Prophet والسلام, is telling us. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, those who are so gentle and kind in the way that they deal with others. Al-muwatti'una aknafa. People skills. And naturally with your family first and foremost and then those that are nearest and those that you have the closest of relationships and interactions with. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who are social and like others and they have people who also like them too because of the way that they behave and interact with them and are sociable with them. We need to be people, people's people. We need to be as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. Imagine that his Sahaba Ridwanullahi Alayhim, every one of them thought that they were the most beloved person from among all the Sahaba because of the way that the Prophet ﷺ interacted with them. And then he وسلم, concluded in saying, and there is no good in the person that does not like others, is not sociable, and others don't like them because of it. This is one of the biggest dilemmas that we have in our days, brothers and sisters, is that we are choosing to we are deliberate and intentional in secluding ourselves and keeping away. Why? Because our people skills, our social skills, our manners and character as a whole are so crude and so unrefined. In the way that we speak and in the way that we interact and the way that we deal with each other, we are hurting people and we're being hurt. Therefore, the easiest thing is to further build that wall and reinforce it and fortify it and have to have as minimal as possible an interaction with each other. Allah save us. And the third and final hadith is on Jabirin radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala inna min ahabbikum ilayya wa aqrabikum minni majlisan yawm al-qiyamati ahasinukum akhlaqa wa inna min abghadikum ilayya وأبعدكم مني مجلسا يوم القيامة الثرثارون المتشدقون المتفيهقون قالوا يا رسول الله قد علمنا الثرثاريين والمتشدقين الثرثارين والمتشدقين فما المتفيهقون قال صلى الله عليه وسلم المتكبرون والحديث في الصحيح ترغيب وترهيب. جابر رضي الله تعالى عنه tells us that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said indeed from the most beloved of you to me. So remember the hadith first most and foremost most beloved to Allah رب العالمين. Those who have the most perfect and complete of their faith 
those who are most beloved to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All of us should want to be the most beloved to Allah Rabbul Alameen. All of us should be concerned that our faith is most complete and as perfect as it can be. And all of us want to be from those that are most beloved to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and are going to be nearest to him on judgment day. He says sallallahu alayhi wasallam indeed from the most beloved of you to me and the nearest in proximity on judgment day are the most beautifully mannered. And we know that judgment day is going to be the epitome of anything and everything of what we can imagine of horror and the fear and of anxiety and of stress and of whatever it's going to be. Where everyone's going to be saying, nafsi, nafsi, oh myself, I'm only concerned with saving myself. And Allah has given us wa ta'ala such descriptions of judgment day that every one of us should have no doubt about what it's going to be. On that day that everyone is going to run away from the most beloved and dearest of people to them. That we're going to want to be closest to the Prophet والسلام, because we know that he's going to be safe on that day. That we know that Allah is going to bless him with favors and with status and with position and with function on that day that's not going to be granted to anybody else. You want to be there? Pay attention to your character. Pay attention to your behavior. Pay attention to your speech and actions and make sure, sure that all of it is beautiful. And that it's sincere for Allah Rabbul Alameen. And that you're doing it because you are emulating the best of the best. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the hadith continues and he says, and from the most despised of you. Allah forbid that we're ever despised to Allah Rabbul Alameen or to his Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from the most distance, the most furthest away from me. On judgment day, and Allah forbid us that we should ever be from the furthest away from his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on judgment day. Or who? He mentioned three descriptions. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam al-Tharun. And this is a person who talks too much. And it's not just talkativeness in the sense of a person who talks but what they say is nice, it's good, it's, it's sociable, it's... If I could give it this term, diarrhea of the mouth. Because nobody thinks about diarrhea as being something good. A person who talks too much garbage and trash and stuff that has no benefit. Stuff that with Allah Azza wa Jal, it counts against the person. It is words that hurt, words that insult, words that bring people down. Sinful speech. And included in that ahibba, it also means diarrhea of writing. Because it's not just in speech today, right? Let nobody think that because the Prophet ﷺ did not mention in, in, in writing that it excludes that if you're going to write, whether it be through chat groups or texts or emails or public message boards or whatever it may be, that that's okay. Because that shows ignorance of understanding Islam. And the second thing, al mutafayhiqun Afwan, al mutashaddiq That this is a person who has an attitude problem. This is a person that is always irritated. This is that person that does not know how to smile and is always grumpy looking to pick a fight. This is that person that is so bitter and sour that if you were to draw their blood, you'd probably pull out vinegar. God forbid, maybe even poison. This is that toxic personality that can never look to find anything to be happy and pleased about that no matter what, they're going to find reason to complain, to argue, to pick a fight. Allah save us. And the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim, they knew those two words and what it meant. But the third, they didn't know what it meant. al mutafayhiq The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, answered that saying that that is the person who is arrogant. 
And we know what an arrogant person is. That's a person who thinks of themselves as being so high that they can't help but look down upon other people and treat them with contempt and belittle them and degrade them and be harsh towards them and who knows what of stuff. And it's enough for us to understand what the Prophet ﷺ had mentioned. لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر That that person who has even the smallest amount of arrogance in their heart will not enter paradise. Allah save us. So brothers and sisters, as we strive intentionally, deliberately, sincerely, to continue to focus on that Ramadan spirit, which means to live with happiness, to have a blessed life as a whole. Let us pay attention to these qualities and let's do so as a family and as a community so that we continue to reinforce this blessedness within ourselves in the same way that that blessed community of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. Allahumma ameen. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد يا الله وياسي رب العالمين that you grant us all that is good in this life and the best of the firdaus al-aala in the next يا الله and that you spare us and save us from anything and everything of punishment in this life and from the least in the next. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you accept from all of us our Ramadan as a whole, all that we have done of good. Ya Allah, and that you bless us to be from those whom you have completely forgiven, that you have entirely erased all of our sins and the effects of those sins. Ya Allah, and that you bless us to be from those whom you have granted your mercy and that you will never deprive of your mercy. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you bless the Ummah as a whole. Ya Allah, guide us Ya Rabbil Alameen to truly live as your Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so beautifully demonstrated for us. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you bless us to be from those who learn and that we apply what you teach us and that you help transform us into the better us that we need to be. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you grant your mercy upon all of our brothers and sisters who passed away during the month of Ramadan and after Ramadan. And of them is the dear aunt of our dear brother Ayman Aishat, Sister Ibtihaj Al-Rifai, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you for her and for the rest of our brothers and sisters that you completely forgive them and grant them your mercy. That you accept them and all that they have done of good. Ya Allah, that you bless their graves to be gardens from the gardens of paradise. And that you ultimately bless us all to be from those that will be in Al-Firdaus Al-A'la, neighbors with your Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you grant health and well-being to all of your slaves and servants. Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you heal our brother Amr Songuri Rabbil Alameen. And that you keep him and everyone else healthy and well. Ya Allah, we ask you that you provide a miraculous cure for all of your slaves and servants, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Rabbil Alameen, that you truly grant us the strength and the determination to continue the Ramadan spirit way into the rest of our lives. Ya Allah, help us to recognize the value in living, living for you, living with you, living because of you. Ya Allah, living the sunnah of your messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, help us to reinforce that in each other. Protect us, Ya Allah, so that we will not be from those who are of the Tharthareen, that we are not from the Mutashaddiqeen, that we are not from the Mutashaddiqeen, Mutafayyiqeen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, protect us that we will never be from those that are despised to your Prophet ﷺ because we know that they would also be despised by you. Ya Allah, rather bless us to be from those that are beloved to your Prophet ﷺ because we know that they are also most beloved to you. اللهم آمين وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمني ويرحمكم الله